angel judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So when you have the mind of Christ, when you are putting on Jesus Christ, he said, follow me daily. Put on my cross and follow me daily. When you have that mind of Christ, you have the ability, therefore, being Jesus Christ, to judge righteously. Not hypocritically, but righteously. We are judging righteously. Why? Because we have studied this out. Why? Because we are familiar with the Pentecostal, charismatic, Oh, Praise God. Just wicked, wicked witchcraft movement. I and myself, once upon a time, was in a Pentecostal church. And they were doing all the weird stuff. Speaking in tongues, but nobody was interpreting it. We are not saying that the gifts have ceased. We do not preach cessationism. However, there is counterfeits. Perfect illustration. Perfect illustration. There's counterfeit gifts, right? There's counterfeit healings, counterfeit miracles. Well, if you have a $20 bill, if you have a $20 bill, $20 bills are counterfeited, right? Well, if that $20 bill no longer existed, there would be no reason to counterfeit a $20 bill. There would be none. So therefore, if the gifts have ceased, there would be no reason for my heart, Bucky, to do counterfeit miracles, counterfeit healings, counterfeit signs and wonders. There would be no reason to do these counterfeit signs and wonders. But Jesus Christ himself said, Paul himself said, no that in the end times, lying signs and wonders would be one of the earmarks that we're living in these times. Deception would be one of the earmarks that we're living in the last days. Deception is going to be at an all-time high. And deception is at an all-time high. My people love to have it so. They love to have it so. Lord, Father God, Lord, Father God, we just pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for everybody who is inside of there, Lord. We pray, Father God, that they surrender unto you. That they're not going there seeking emotionalism. That they're not going in there seeking these lying signs and wonders, these counterfeit healings, these counterfeit miracles. We pray right now in Jesus' name, Lord, that the brethren in there, that they come out of there, that they come out and be ye separate. Paul said to the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, the Apostle Paul, he said, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? This is idol worship. For ye are the temple of the living God. We are the temple of the living God. He dwells within us. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Not saith Aaron, but saith the Lord, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord and Savior. People ask, people ask us, they, they say Jesus, they believe in Jesus, they preach Jesus. Well, let's see what the Bible says. We have to judge everything by the Word of God. We don't judge it by the Book of Opinions. The King James Bible does not have the Book of Opinions. Maybe these modern, heretical, perverted Bibles, maybe the NIV has the Book of Opinions. 
maybe the Apocrypha as the book of opinions, but the King James Bible, the inspired word of God in the English spoken language, does not have the book of opinions. I don't care what someone's opinion is. I care what the word of God says. Now what did Paul say to the Corinthians in chapter 11? This gets really good. This gets good. For such false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers, like Ron Hart Bunky, also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. What are his works? His works are deceiving people for riches and sending people to hell. Preaching a false gospel. My brother read the scripture, but it is so important to keep reading it. It is so important to give this exhortation out here today. I've never preached like this before. This is my first time preaching like this, believe it or not. And it's not me, it's the Holy Spirit. It's not me, I swear. The real Holy Spirit. Not that. Not the Kundalini false serpent energy that rises up your spine and hits every chakra point until it reaches your third eye, your pineal gland, and then you ascend into consciousness. You ascend into the Christ consciousness that this new age wicked garbage promotes. Witchcraft, Antichrist, Luciferianism. This is high level Luciferianism. First Galatians. <laughs> I mean, Galatians chapter 1. Praise the Lord. That's the joy of the Lord right there. How we can even come out here and laugh. <laughs> the, the book of opinions. Galatians chapter 1. Verse 8. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which ye have heard, what you have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Let him be accursed if they preach any other gospel. The gospel of Reinhardt Bunky, let him be accursed. Now what did Paul say? He said it again. As we said before, so I say now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. They're not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. So what does that mean? Let him be accursed. If it were possible, if it were possible, I wish Reinhard Bunky could be saved. If it were possible. Unfortunately, unfortunately, he's been given over to a reprobate mind. How do I know that? The fruit. I'm judging that by the Word of God. I'm not judging that from the book of opinions. Again, I hate to keep beating at a dead horse, but my Bible does not have the book of opinions. Not first opinions, not second opinions, not third opinions. My book, the Word of God, the King James Bible in the English spoken language, has 66 books. That's all we need. That's all we need. I do read them. I've been reading them, brother. Come back and hear the word. Hear the word, bro. Come on, man. Hear the word. Come on, man. Hear the word, bro. Brother, we love this word, and we love you. That's why we're out here today. We are out here today to share the true gospel of Jesus Christ, not the gospel according to Ryan our Bunky. My Bible doesn't have that gospel my, my, my Bible has four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Reinhard Bunky was not included in that Gospel. There's not a fifth Gospel. The Gospel of Thomas, that is not a Gospel of God. Many, many Christians will say this. They will say, well, God is love. Why aren't you guys preaching love? We are preaching love what they're talking about. First John 4, 8. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Verse 16. 
and we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Brethren, if we did not love you, we would not be out here preaching this gospel today. We would not be out here being mocked and ridiculed for coming out here and preaching the gospel. That is because we truly love you. If Reinhard Bunky and Jesus culture love you, they would preach against sin. They would tell you, brethren, you need to repent. You need to repent. But they don't preach that. Jesus culture preaches spirit break out. Spirit break out. But what spirit is Jesus culture trying to break out? They're trying to break out the Kundalini spirit, the spirit of Antichrist. The Antichrist is not going to come with a big giant pitchfork and say, hey, I'm the Antichrist, I'm here to take over the world. No, he's going to come with all lying signs and wonders. He's going to come claiming to be Jesus Christ. He's going to come doing all the same workings that Jesus did. It happened in the book of Acts happened in the book of Acts. Book of Acts, chapter 8. Book of Acts, chapter 8. Verse 9, but there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. Simon the sorcerer was proclaimed to be a great one. Basically claiming to be Jesus Christ himself. <laughs> to whom they all gave heed. From the least to the greatest. They all gave heed to Simon the sorcerer. From the poorest person in the world in Samaria to the rich, most powerful person in Samaria. They all gave heed. They all gave heed to what Simon the Sorcerer was doing. He was, he was, he was enchanting them and charming them with his sorcery, with his witchcraft. I digress. And to him, they had regard, I'm sorry, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest saying, this man, being Simon the Sorcerer, this man is the great power of God. That's what people are doing with Reinhard Bunky. They're saying, this man has got the power of God. He's healing people. If Reinhard Bunky had, was, was healing people, if Reinhard Bunky had the power of God, when the 14 people got trampled over at his conference in Africa, when they got trampled over and were killed, Reinhard Bunky would have raised all 14 of those people from the dead. But Reinhard Bunky did not raise those 14 people from the dead. Why? Because he can't. Why? Because he's not operating with the Holy Spirit. I digress. And to him they had regard, being Simon the Sorcerer once again. And to them they had regard, because of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. Sorcery. Sorcery. What is sorcery? What is sorcery? When we study the Word of God, it is best to study and to break down the definitions of words. Because this is how you get revelation. Sorcery. Simon, Simon the Sorcerer used sorcery, which is magic, enchantment, witchcraft, divination, by the assistance of, or supposed assistance of, evil spirits. Evil spirits or the power of commanding evil spirits, a conjurer, an enchanter, a magician. Reinhard Bunky, he practices witchcraft. He is a sorcerer. He is conjuring up evil spirits. He's getting assistance from evil spirits to do these supposed healings, these supposed miracles, these flying signs and wonders. When they perform this music in there, when they work everybody up into an emotional frenzy, when Jesus culture plays their song, Spirit Break Out, for 30 minutes, 
They're working people up into a trance, a hypnotic trance. Why? To get them to operate off of emotion and adrenaline, not the Holy Spirit. They're conjuring up evil spirits. Back to Simon the Sorcerer. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning of the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and he was baptized. He continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Lying signs and wonders, sorcery, witchcraft, divination, the Bible, our Lord, our God, our Savior. He says these things are an abomination. Reinhard Bunke is an abomination in the sight of God. Why? Because he practices witchcraft. He is a sorcerer. Please let Ryan Hart Bunky know we are out here preaching against him. We're preaching the true gospel of Jesus Christ, not the gospel according to Ryan Hart Bunky. Ryan Hart Bunky is bunk. He's false. He's fake. Ma'am, ma'am, please. If you're looking for healing in there, ma'am, you're not going to get it. Ma'am, we exhort you, ma'am. Seek Jesus, he will heal you. Don't seek Reinhard Borky. Well, come out the same, sister. All right, Acts chapter 13. This is a very similar story to Simon the Sorcerer. Very similar, more witchcraft, more sorcery. Verse 6, Acts 13, verse 6. And when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bar-Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. He desired to hear the word of God. Sergius Paulus desired to hear the word. He did not desire to be seduced with lying signs and wonders. He desired to hear the word. The word of God, this is what heals. The word of God will get you out of that wheelchair, ma'am. The word of God, not Reinhard Bunky. Bartolimus, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Now, Bar Jesus, Alimus, he was seeking to turn the deputy away from the faith. How? By using lying signs and wonders. When these lying signs and wonders, when they would be proven to be false, then Sergius Paulus would then therefore be like, I want nothing to do with what this is called to be Christianity. And that's what's happening in here. That is what's happening in here. Many people are going to be turned away from the faith when these false healings do not happen. When they go home, when they go home tonight, when they go home in the next week, and all these people that may have been supposedly healed, when they, when reality sets in and the adrenaline has worn off and the emotionalism high has came off, then they will realize, I have not been healed. And then, then what happens? They lose their faith in God. This happened to an Indian family. An Indian family. They put all this trust and faith in Benny Hinn. That Benny Hinn, that Benny Hinn, not Jesus, that Benny Hinn would heal their son of brain cancer. And they went to a Benny Hinn crusade. They went to that Benny Hinn crusade. They've been faithfully, faithfully, faithfully giving Benny Hinn tithes. Faithfully sending him donations, sending him money. And seven weeks later, seven weeks later, after that crusade, their son died of brain cancer. 
But Benny Hinn claimed to have healed this young man. And guess what? They lost their trust. This Indian family, they lost their trust. They lost their faith in God. They didn't lose their faith in Benny Hinn. They lost their faith in God because their son didn't get healed. Why? Because they were seeking after Benny Hinn. They weren't seeking after God. I digress once again. Back to Acts 13. Bar Jesus, Elimus, the false prophet, the sorcerer. He was trying to turn Sergius Paulus away from the faith by using sorcery, by using lying signs and wonders like Reinhard Bonk. Many will be turned away from the faith because of this wicked garbage. I'm faithful and thankful in our Lord Jesus Christ, though, that he knows those that are his. But we as Christians out here today, as the brethren, as the body of Christ is supposed to do, we're out here today warning, sounding the trumpet, sounding the alarm, sounding the battle cry. Praise God. Brethren, this is a spiritual battle we're in. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians 6, 12. Back to Elimus, false prophet. Then Saul, verse 9, then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, not a false ghost, not a false spirit, but filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O full of all subtility and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? They are perverting the right ways of the Lord, and they will not cease. They will not cease from perverting the word, the word of God. They will not cease from perverting the true gospel of Jesus Christ. That is reprobate. That is reprobate. That is not the Holy Spirit. Verse 11, And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. God, through Paul, struck Elimus, bar Jesus, the false prophet, he struck him blind. He struck him blind because he was perverting the right ways of God. He was perverting the word of God. He's doing lying signs and wonders. Guess what? That same could happen to Reinhard Bunky. Same could happen to him. Verse 12. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Sergius Paulus, he saw a real sign and wonder. He saw a real miracle. He saw a man who was perverting the word of God. He saw a man who was trying to lead people astray. He saw this man get struck blind through the Apostle Paul. And that, my friends, is a real sign and wonder. That is a real miracle. That is the power of God, not this. I repeat that one more time. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. My friends, doctrine is very important. We are to adhere to sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. This, this movement, when I was at the Tom White Conference two weeks ago, and many more in this movement, they are against doctrine. They are against theology. Why? Because they know it exposes their wickedness. It exposes their unfruitful works of darkness. Ephesians 5.11 Praise God! Praise God! 
Praise God, that's right. Lord, rebuke Satan. Ephesians 5 and 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Reprove the unfruitful works of darkness. Now another word, a synonym for the word reprove is expose. To make manifest, to bring to light. What we are doing here today is we are exposing the unfruitful works of darkness of really Hart Bucky, of Jesus culture, of Bethel Church that Jesus culture comes from in Ready, California with their pastor Bill Johnson. We are making manifest. We are bringing to light these unfruitful works of darkness. If this was of God, people would really be getting healed. There would be fruit produced to show actual, true, genuine healing and miracles. If Reinhardt Bunky can heal, why isn't he at Emory right now healing people? Why isn't he at Grady right now going through that whole hospital and healing people? Why isn't he doing that? Why do we have to come to the Phillips Arena to get healed by Reinhardt Bunky? To get Reinhardt Bunky's impartation of the Holy Spirit? It's a lie, my friends. That's why. If Reinhardt Bunky was a true man of God, he was really healing, he would go heal everyone in the hospitals. He would go to the graves and raise people Sweet from the dead. Bro. Are you in a boy band? But he's not. Lord rebuke that as well. This is a show. This is a dog and pony show. This is all theatrics. Reinhard Bunky's a great actor. Acting is a form of witchcraft. Joel Osteen, another actor. Witchcraft, false prophet. T.D. Jakes, false prophet. Crystal Dollars, false prophet. Joyce Meyer, false prophet. Wendy DeVille, false prophet. Charles Stanley, false prophet. Perry Snow, false prophet. John Hagee, false prophet. We're calling him out. Yes, John Hagee. John Hagee promotes, promotes Zionism. He promotes Zionism. He says that Jesus Christ is not even the Messiah. No, he promotes Jesus Christ is not the Messiah. He promotes, John Hagee promotes, that you can get to heaven just by being a Jew. You don't have to believe on Jesus Christ. You can be a Jew, and you're saved because of your ethnicity. That is a lie. Again, this scripture, we beat it in the head, but I'm going to say it again, because Paul said it twice. In the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Galatians 1, verses 8 and 9. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which he have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so I say now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. All these modern televangelists, your John Haggies, your Joe Osteens, your T.D. Jakes, your Crespo Dollars, your Joyce Myers, they preach another gospel. So what's all this here? His they do not no, no, preach no. the true counsel of God. They do not <laughs> preach the full gospel oh, that's of not Jesus mine. Christ. Guy came by and they so preach so. heresies. They preach lies. Why? To fatten their pocketbooks. Why does Kenneth Copeland, why does Kenneth Copeland need a $10 million jet? Why does Crepo Dollars need a $65 million jet? How does a $65 million jet supposed to serve the same about everybody coming to $65 million that could probably eradicate homelessness in Atlanta, Georgia. But no, Crepo Dollars needs a $65 million jet. Crumple Dollar, Lord rebuke you. Lord rebuke you and your false wicked gospel. Praise God. I'll pray for you, sir. I'll pray for you too. What's your name? My name's Nick. What's yours? What's yours? Nick. Nick? Here. God bless you, brother. They preach a pro 
prosperity gospel. Earthly riches is not a promise to the children of God. It is not a promise. Again, Paul gave an exhortation to Timothy. All those who live godly in Christ Jesus, not some, not a few, not maybe, not if, all who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. All who live godly. So, so, if you're not living godly, then you're probably blending in with the world, trying to be friends with the world, yo, check out the, yo, yeah. check out Dark Star. instead of a game of card for Dark Star. being friends with our Lord and Savior. Brethren, the, the, the choice is simple. Either we choose Jesus, or we choose the world. Amen. Either we choose the kingdom of heaven, or we choose eternal damnation. Either we're a sheep or we're a goat. Either we're a wheat or we're a tear. I keep, I keep preaching all night. Praise God. There's so much Bible to preach out of. Woo! All right. Matthew chapter 13. We'll just read the entire chapter. We will read the entire chapter. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him. So that he went into a ship and sat, and there the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them all. Some seeds will fall by the wayside tonight. I understand that. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched and because they had no root, they withered away. They withered away. Souls are withering away because they're not calling on Jesus Christ. They're following false signs and miracles. Souls are withering away. Brother, we don't want anyone's soul to wither away. We do not want people's souls to wither away. We want all of us, we want all of us to go to the kingdom of heaven, not the lake of fire. Yes, sir. <laughs> bless. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. Now, when you break down these, these definitions and, and the uh, theology of some of these words, thorns also represent false prophets. Many seeds are falling amongst false prophets. Like my heart. But other fell into good ground. This is the ground that we pray is being prepared 